Let's look at Second Chronicles real quickly because uh, we have something that that's enough for us to just shout and go home uh, in the opening verses. Uh, in verse uh, number 15, uh, God says something to uh, the people. He says, listen, all you Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord, do not be afraid, do not be dismayed because of the great multitude, for the battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. Uh, this uh, one scripture uh, is quoted and used in Psalms. Uh, it is theorized and it is given as an encouragement uh, for us that many of us have heard it before. The battle is not yours. But understand the nature of the atmosphere of this text will bring a deeper appreciation for when God says the battle is not yours. Uh, in uh, verse 1 up until around verse number 13 or so, we find that uh, the Amorites and the Moites and the uh, Mount Seir of the Edomites, uh, who were once all enemies, had come together in order to destroy God's people. Uh, they, they had come in unison, in tandem, and there had been a battle before in which the king himself had been injured. And, and while resting uh, in, 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 in warfare, and over and over again with this hideous army, uh, he finds himself uh, receiving word that, that all three of Jerusalem's enemies have gotten together and concocted a plan and are in route to destroy Jerusalem forevermore. Uh, king Jehoshaphat recognized that there are some things in life you can't handle by yourself. Y'all ought to say amen. amen. There are some problems that occur in life that you just can't handle by yourself. Amen. And the enemy, the enemy's job uh, is, is to, to not just attack you by himself, but he has a, a triad attack. It's found in John 10, in the verse number 10, for the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Yes. Uh, each one of these enemies against God people were, were murdersome. They were hateful. They killed women and children. They left nothing. They took everything, and they had every intent to destroy and to annihilate the people of God. Great. Jehoshaphat heard the news that these three enemies had come together who had fought, uh, fought for years against one another. Now the mountain people and the city folk and rural folk and now all come together who don't know God like they know God. Uh -huh. To tell down the people of God, he got concerned. Has there ever been a time in your life in which uh, uh, you looked around and it seemed like everything around you was falling apart? Uh, has there ever been a time where it felt like uh, all your enemies had, had gotten together and had a conference and, and figured out a way to tear you down and, and figured out a way to point out every flaw that you never made? Almost like they had a, a meeting to see that if we work together, we could get him. You remember that it was the Sadducees and the, and the Pharisees and who, who disagreed on the nature of Christ and disagreed on the resurrection and disagreed on Moses. And all they did was fall. But when it came time to killed Jesus. Uh, the Sadducees uh, and the Pharisees uh, came together uh, to take out Jesus and, and they thought they got it but he got up early one morning. Y'all know the story. He got up early one morning and, and he rose again with all power in his hand. Uh, in those times of life uh, when you feel that, that the walls are closing in, in those times of life when you feel that your enemy uh, have become enemies and you don't have just one problem. I'm not I'm not preaching nobody up in here because I know none, none of you really had just one. Y'all just had one problem at a time, ah. don't you? Yeah, you can, some of y'all just got from the answer. Right? Y'all just got one problem. The kids are always happy and everything good. I know I'm just looking for 10 people that know what it feels like to have all kind of stuff happening in your life to where you don't know what to do. To where you're just sitting around wondering which one's going to take me out. I got financial problems, family problems, friend problems, work problems. My body hurt. My big toe won't act right. Now, I'm talking about that. Can y'all relate to the key? I need you to do three things. I 
need you to sit down somewhere. Mm. I want you to put your mind at rest. And then I want you to seek the glory of God. If God had asked you to go outside and rest for a bear, you'd be all nervous and excited, wouldn't you? But he said, I just want you just to sit down. I want you to sit down. I want you to get still. And I want you to see the salvation of God. Oh my God. Is it five people over here that's for the Holy Ghost? I don't care what you're dealing with. God doesn't want you to do anything. The battle is not yours. Yes. But the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. I don't care if your friends or whoever is messing with you. Yes. It's not your battle. And the problem is you're trying to fight a battle that's not yours. You cannot win. You can't beat the devil. Uh -huh. You can't. You can't, you can't Stop for mouth from running. You can't stop for from thinking about you or criticizing you. You gotta learn that the battle is not yours, but it belongs to the Lord. Man. No wonder we are admonished through God's word. We're admonished through God's word. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. In the, in the nature of the disposition we're gonna have in the midst of, uh, of all us multitudes and challenges of this life. Well, just as you get one thing right, something else will wrong. And when you get that correct, something else will wrong. Then they, then they start all over again. Amen. Every time you turn around, there's a problem. If you're not careful, you will lose your mind. Uh -huh. but, but God says uh, in 2 chapter 4, verse number 8 and 9, he said, let me tell you something. That we, we, we go through some stuff, uh -huh. but we're not a distressed. Yes. Uh, we, we, are, we, 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 we are in perplexing situations, but yet we're not in despair. Uh, we are persecuted, but we are not destroyed. Uh, we, we are not forsaken. We're cast down, but we're not destroyed. Folk that really know God like I know God realize that when the going gets tough, we got a tough God that gets going. Y'all got to say amen. We, we, we got a God. We got a, a big, big old God. And sometimes we spend too much of our energy focusing on our problem rather than our Savior. We got a God that sits high and look low and no weapon form. The Bible says in Isaiah 59 verse 17, no weapon form against God is going to prosper. I don't care how they still can't be God. You can get all the kingdoms in the world, they can't touch God. Y'all ought to say amen. I don't care what plot, what maliciousness that comes about, the God's kingdom is going to stand forever. Listen to the list of, of enemies against him in Daniel 2 and verse number 14. The Bible said, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up another kingdom. In other words, in front of the Greeks, the Romans, the Turkey, the, the Persians, the Syrians, the Assyrians, all of those kingdoms will not be able to stand against God. Don't you know your life bill not bigger than God? Don't you know your problems within your life not be? Your health is not bigger than God? Don't you know the stuff you're going through shouldn't stop you from worshiping God, for proving you where God is? And I have you shout thank you, Jesus, because God said, when you got a lot of problems, He said, don't worry about it. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Somebody ought to be saying that name right now. Am I talking to five people up in here? I try to quantify the lessons by saying how many people know what it's like to have a lot of problems. If you ain't got a lot of problems, you're going to miss this message. But I'm going to have church anyhow. But then it's a show good for me. I don't, know, I don't know what's wrong with you. But God said, I'm going to show you something that you would have never thought of. How in the world am I going to get all this stuff off? How am I going to beat all this stuff? You're not going to beat it. You have not been able to beat it. The only way you're going to make it is with God on your side. And when God says, sit down, be still, See the salvation of God, you ought to be shouting, thank you, Jesus, because that battle is not yours. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to help your, your child with a addiction problem, that's not your battle. Yeah. That, that, that don't belong to you. Trying to break, trying to break habits that you've been doing since you were 12. The problem, you've been trying to break it, that's not your battle. King Jehoshaphat knew that there have been, we fought a lot of wars, Judah and Jerusalem, but we ain't never seen a multitude like this, over a million strong, China not the first one, over a million strong have come together with one intent, and that is to hate God and the people of God. I stop by to tell you that there are folk walking around who's working for the enemy who has come together to tear your life apart, and the word from God is, he said, let me tell you something, that battle is not yours. You can't change nobody, you can't nobody, you can't beat up nobody sometimes you got to wait on God and just see what God do and when God does something, he don't just do it he do it, show up good, y'all ought to say amen right now, now here's the problem 
Jehoshaphat has the, 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 the belief that I see a million men marching this way, not far from the Red Sea. I, I see them, they, that my enemies are lined up and we fought some of them before. And in fact, I'm resting from a war that I already been in. You know, it just seems like every time you start healing from one thing, yeah. Oh, yeah. something worse oh, yeah. happened. Yeah. Y'all not with me on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It seems like just as soon as you get one problem out of the way, something else pop up. Uh, Y'all you, might remember Job. You may remember Job. It just seemed like that the Bible says in Job chapter 1 through chapter 3 that there was a day when Job was sitting out minding his own business. And the devil got upset and said, The only reason that Job is worshiping you is because you're too good to him. But if you stop protecting him, I'll make Job cuss you to his face. Job did not fix the problem himself. But he said that. Uh, Although in Job 19.25, I know that my redeemer lives. And he should sing on the latter day. Job, what were you saying? Uh, even if what I'm going through kill me, one day I know I'll be redeemed in another body. Will well, there be no more suffering, no more pain, and no more accusations? Uh, I know that I'm going to see God's justice prevail. Uh, King Jehoshaphat knew uh, that though this enemy was coming, uh, that rather than Turn to the Lord, and the Bible said he was intelligent in his turning to the Lord. Now the Bible says over in, 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 in chapter in verse number six, uh, in chapter twenty of our text, uh, that he was smart enough to know that he that he had better use uh, of the cognitions that motivate God. And you better get this from King Jehoshaphat because the reason some of you are blessed, you don't know how to pray to God. You just know when you get in trouble, say, Lord, I need your help. Lord, can you help me? Now he. Art thou the God? Art thou not the God of heaven? And rulest thou, and rulest thou 
over the kingdom. Okay, I'm going to go to rule over these kingdoms. It's hard to begin to the human rights. The Moabites and the Amorites free. And in thy hand is and in the hand, power and might. Don't you have power, God? So that none is able to So that none is able to ascend you? Then you, God, free. And not thou art God. And, and all thou that God? Who didst drive out the inhabitants. Did you drive? Did we already beat the Amorites in Jericho? Did we already cross the Red Sea and destroy those Ites and Gittites and all those Hittites? Aren't you God that drove these folk out of the land in the first place? And now they reconvene and come together and try to destroy your people? Didn't you do it? And are we Abraham's friend? When you pray to God, you say, you God, and you made a promise to Abraham, and you did this for Abraham, and I'm depending on the covenant that you made, that you would protect us from the pestilence, the swords, from danger, from trap, from everything else. God has to keep his word. Amen. God said me. He has no I 
see a defeated sissy Christian that in the face of their calamity, they are crying before the church and weeping, talking about, I can't do it. I can shout out somewhere. It's not for you to do. It's the Lord's battle. I can't fix it. I don't feel the sound somewhere and see what God's getting ready to do. I don't have no offering sound somewhere and shout in the name of Jesus and see what God's getting ready to do. I'm going to sit up before the church and sit up telling people how good God's been to you. You stand up talking about the devil doing this to me and the devil doing that to me and they doing this to me and they you give it glory to the devil. You ought to stand up and say, I all the stuff I've been through, I still see the glory of God. You ought to put God forward in the midst of your battle. Somebody ought to be singing a glory to his name. In the midst of your battle, somebody ought to be singing a so good to me. In the midst of your suffer, you ought to be singing with the spirit and the understanding I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. God says, sit down. Set yourself. But he ain't acting right. Sit down. I'll take care of you. You can't that battle my church. That's probably some of y'all. Y'all been trying to fix him for a long time. You ain't gonna fix him. He gonna whoop you, have you up out there, you gray head and all loving. If you keep on for you better, you better, you better trust God. You just you're gonna try to fix her, you can't fix her. You can't fix no woman. That's a grown woman, it's your daughter. You can't fix no grown woman. You mess around with have no check. <laughs> Be on all kinds of support. Have a say after you. And he's taking care of her new man with his new suit that you bought. The battle is not yours. The Mohawk had children that keep going around getting in trouble and running up stuff over and over again. You gotta get you some sleep somewhere. That battle is not yours. The Bible says uh, that we ought to remember the great in the days of our youth. Uh, because when you get mature, uh, your mom and dad ain't gonna be able to help you. When you get older, you will be held accountable for the stuff you're doing. Uh, your battle is not to correct a grown man, but to sit down somewhere and get still and see the salvation of I say amen. Yeah. Coming up in the house of God. Gonna fix the church. You can't fix the church. Yeah. Now, this ain't your church. This is God's house. I don't like this. Sit down and shut up. Sit down. Sing praises. Sing glory to his name. You go to that church. Well, you know, they do the shut up. Sit down and be sealed. Is that your Bible? All right, now I'm about to get to I'm about to get finished. They didn't leave me much time. The son didn't call the Holy Ghost, and he cut me off for about 15 minutes. So I got to try to wrap this up. He got full of Holy Ghost. That's all right. We're going to get through anyway. Y'all all right? Y'all all right? Now, now the word see means the expectation. It means to experience, uh, the, uh, to experience the unexpected uh, and to rejoice. Just like you do with a football game. When God says see, he means he's about to show you something, get yourself ready, because I'm about to do something that you never thought would have been done. Amen, amen. I'm about to help your enemy. Y'all get ready for this. Fold that full, that note, that full of Holy Ghost to get ready for this. And if you, you can't relate, you can't relate. God said, I'm about to take your enemies. You're not going to lift a hand. And then I'm going to ambush them. I'm not even going to dispatch an angel. And them folk that's talking about you, dog, them folk that's running down preaching, them folk that backstabbed and got together, he said, we're going to make them kill each other. We ain't going to fire a shot. Amen. Amen. I don't look like they're bad, they're winning. He said, we ain't going to fire a shot. What I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, if you trust me, I'm going to show you what the vision the house actually do. And so the text says, get verse 22, I want you to see this and I'm through. In verse 22, the text says what? And when they began to sing, when they began, when they began to praise God in the midst of that calamity, the, lo the Lord said, the Lord said, against the children. He said what? The Lord said, ambushments. Say it again. He said what? The Lord said, ambushments against the children. I don't have to get no vision. God said, I'm going to set an ambush. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Y'all out there. Can't go over there. God, I'm going to set an ambush. If you will leave it alone, I'm going to ambush them. Somebody say amen. I'm going to ambush them. You know, I'll let them they do it. I'm going to set an ambush. Because see, I know they don't like each other in the first place. Uh, and the meanest of those groups uh, 
were the Edomites. And the only thing that people the Amorites uh, and, 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 and the Moabites together was the fact that they were scared of the Edomites. And the Edomites was the baddest one. So the text said, when they got through killing the Edomites, they looked at each other and said, well, I know I can whoop you. I can whoop you. They killed each other too. And then they got through fighting what nothing left but body bloods and the spoils of the battle. And then guess what the people of God did? Keep, keep reading, keep reading. I want y'all to see. I gotta see this. This is what Yeah, yeah. And when Joseph fed and the people came to take away the spoil of them. Okay, well, then, then, then they, 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 they had, did they do any fighting? No. Did they curse back? Did they seek vengeance? No. They understood Romans 12, 19, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Thus says the Lord, they understood. Yep. They understood that God said it. Numbers chapter 23, verse 17, he said, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man he shall repent. Have he not said it, shall he not do it? If he didn't say it, will he not make it good? If God says, sit down, don't worry about you about to see something, you would have never thought he made the very people that teamed up against you kill each other and run each other out and left you to pick up their spawns. We all are saying amen. Yeah. Now, 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 let me just pick up a little bit of something. The text says they did what? They found among them an abundance, both they rich, found an abundance. Both riches with riches. The dead bodies. A rich man, all right, read. They press the jewels. They got some, they got, they do, you know, they got their rings, their earrings, they do new robes. Which all right. Took off them. They, they, took, they took it off of them, read. More than they could. It's somebody that's low down, that's got your child. 